So I'm going to do it a little more uh, diplomatically, but I'm going to say the same thing. That we, have, that we have methods uh, to map uh, the risks of fi both in finance and outside finance that are not quite adapted to the modern world. Mm. And I, that, uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, no I just, just in that line, uh, where you say that my major hobby is teasing people who take themselves and the quality of their knowledge too seriously. Uh, I guess that kind of puts it in a nutshell, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, <laughs> it is a good hobby. Okay, you can't uh, you can't do it all the time, but it's a good hobby. It's basically showing that uh, all this quantitative uh, finance doesn't work very well. Uh, that um, people who take themselves seriously don't quite understand the world, and that we need in finance, you know, if you want, you know, to understand that there is randomness out there, and we always have less than half the story. And then the other half sometimes can be very significant. You have a massive fan club in South Africa, so I'm not surprised that these seminars are virtually fully booked, largely because of fooled by randomness. Now, what was interesting in the workshop was you said you were a bit disappointed by the book, and watch out for the next one on Black Swans. Yeah, I, well, I, I stopped uh, uh, all activities two years ago because I had writer's block, and, and now I emerged. From, I mean, except giving uh, like a workshop here and there, maybe seven, eight times a year, no more. And, and now Immersion has just finished Black Swan, and she's very satisfied, much more satisfied than when I finished Full, Full by Randomness. I put it, everything in it. Uh, mm -hmm. so, go ahead. How is it different? It is. Well, it goes far deeper. Uh, I organized the book um, in uh, three segments. The first one, where I talk about the psychology uh, of our understanding of the world. And what well, half the problem of what I call the black swan, which is the rare event that is very significant, half the problem is psychological, and half of it is, uh, what would I say, mathematical, physical, scientific. Okay, So half is how we perceive events, that we have this uh, mental uh, uh, disposition to want to ignore the role of randomness in life. In Fool by Randomness, I, I, I didn't, I, people like it maybe because it was full of stories, but it, was not, it didn't go deep enough. In that one, I really felt satisfied. I felt like I was not superficial anymore. So, I, so the psychology part, I went far deeper. Mm -hmm. and, and I analyzed, and the second section is on prediction. And I went and read and spent two years reading papers on prediction and looking at our track record in predicting all kinds of events, not just in finance, historical events, wars, everything. And, and it's very distressing because we are horrible at predicting and we're not acting okay, in accordance with very simple, this very simple fact, okay? something you can, you, can, you, can, you can very easily check that we are very bad at predicting. Yet why don't we accept that we're bad at predicting and try to go from there? Uh, so the, and the third part of the book um, you know, uh, looks at what, what to do about it, basically. When is it going to be available? It's going to be, <laughs> okay, I, 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 you know, let me explain to you. There's time, trader time is, you know, closer to time. And then there's something called publisher time. Uh -huh. okay. So <laughs> it should be in three months, but I, I don't know if you work with publishers, they're not like traders, okay? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so it should be available in three months. I, I delivered the manuscript yesterday. Oh, brilliant. Well, that's great. fantastic, and congratulations. I, at, uh, as any writer would know, that's an enormous achievement, particularly when you follow up on a bestseller. But Nassim, I'd like to just uh, maybe go on a little different tack, just to get your views on this, this whole shift in power, or so it seems, from the West to the East. And without um, putting you on the spot here, are, if people are not understanding the value of randomness, are they understanding maybe the big trends, which are so easy, or seem to be so easy to identify, where Asia is re-emerging um, from a historical perspective to back to where it was in the past. Um, I, I, and you know, in, in the central uh, uh, argument of the black swan, it, uh, there are two domains. One domain I call mediocristan, and one domain I call extremistan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, mediocristan is where you're paid by the hour. Extremistan is where, where you're paid by the ideas. Okay. In other words, mediocristan is where you, the bell curve works. And Extremistan is where, where the bell curve does not work and uh, where you have what we call scalable payoff. In other words, if you write a book, it is Extremistan 
because you don't have to write a book every time someone wants to read it. You see, your labor goes one boom, and then it's very, very uh, random. You can sell a million books or one copy, you see? Mm -hmm. So what happened, I tried to look at the economic life along these two categories. Where are the businesses that are mediocre stand? In other words, a restaurant business is mediocre stand. Mediocre stand in the sense that uh, the income of a restaurant is capped. It's not scalable. Mm -hmm. Okay, If you have a great idea, you may franchise it, but still you, know, you cannot uh, uh, have a huge hit with uh, the restaurant business. You see? You cannot have a huge biz uh, hit being a dentist. So you have less randomness in that environment, far less randomness. But on the other hand, the, the upside is capped, okay? Mm -hmm. And the up exception does not dominate. So you don't have what we call fat tails. Mm -hmm. Now, the other business, the business, uh, you know, the one that belongs to Extremistan is like the computer business or the movie business or the book business or the media business or the internet business, okay? It's a business where a very small number of companies have the almost the entire market share or you have uh, hundreds of thousands of computer companies and at some point Microsoft had 60% of the sales okay, of the software companies okay? mm -hmm. so you have that business dominated so what has happened over the last I would say 12 years is a very rapid shift where everything that is scalable and leveraged okay, is pretty much dominated by the United States and everything where you have what you call the mediocre stand where people where you have technical skills required okay but the payoff is to your labor technical labor but labor nevertheless okay that one is shifting to Bangalore China and other parts of the world you see Dr. Nassim Taleb